So today is actually Tuesday. I had an appointment yesterday and the building that it was in was so hot. Like it felt like my entire body was sweating. It was just not a good time. And since then, I just really didn't feel good the entire rest of that day. So I wasn't up to starting uh, this week's vlog or anything like that or reading or anything. So I just finished my reading for today and so I've read a few more chapters since I've last talked to you and pretty much it's just Marius kind of integrating with the ABC Society and him listening to their speeches and stuff like one chapter is literally just like one long speech by the skeptic guy I don't remember his name I think it starts with a G Grantaire something like that and I don't even remember what he was going on and on about, but it wasn't really important because they completely changed the subject the next chapter. But what I just read is pretty much someone mentions Waterloo. And so Marius is just like, eh? And so they get on the subject of Napoleon. And Marius is just like, starts going on this huge rant about how amazing Napoleon was and all of the things he accomplished. And he's name dropping like all of these like mathematicians, philosophers, like all these people that are really well known and basically putting them on the same pedestal as Napoleon. And at the end, Marius is basically like, um, why would you not want to be a part of a nation who had this guy as an emperor? Like what is better than that? And someone says freedom. And so it's just like a shot in the heart for Marius. And it kind of makes him think about it in a different way. And I'm gonna read the last little bit of this chapter because I think it kind of puts it more into perspective. But pretty much after someone says like freedom or whatever, or to be free specifically, um, everyone leaves the room except for Angel Ross and they hear someone singing outside and it says, it was uh, Comfer and this is the song he sang. If Caesar had offered me glory and war for which I must abandon my mother's love, I would say to great Caesar, take back your scepter and your chariot I love my mother more, alas, I love my mother more. The wistful tenderness with which Confer saying it invested the little son with such a strange grandeur. Marius was staring thoughtfully at the ceiling. He repeated, half unconsciously, my mother, and Enjuras laid a hand on his shoulder. Citizen, he said, my mother is the Republic. And so pretty much everyone is saying that they choose France over an emperor, essentially, and being free from that sort of rule and so once again Marius's world is kind of getting rocked and his philosophies and his beliefs are going to be changing because what kind of started the whole thing is Marius is like what do you people believe in like I hear you talk about all of these different subjects and say all these different things but I don't actually know what you believe and who you believe in and stuff and essentially the answer to that is the people and what was the name of the next chapter? Oh, it's just called Domestic Matters. So I don't know if that's actually going to be anything. But there's only one more chapter left in this book. So after tomorrow, that will be the end of this section. And I think it has been interesting seeing how Marius thinks kind of evolve in such a short span of time. Like him finding out about his father and getting kicked out and meeting these people and everything. Like that's all happened in the span of like just a few months and the last part has just been like in a week so just very quickly kind of propelling him onto the course that we see in the musical in the movie so that's where i'm at right now and this week is going to be a little weird because we we're actually in the start of a heat wave and so most of the week is going to be just staying inside trying to stay cool kind of deal like today is the first day where the temperatures are starting to go up a bit because we've been mainly in the low 70s and it's been really nice and comfortable but today the high is 81 and it hasn't quite hit that yet which is why i decided to film out here because i pretty much won't be able to go out here the rest of the week because each day gets hotter and hotter until saturday we'll be towing that like 100 degree line so we did all our grocery shopping this morning and I have like everything planned out and it's pretty much all like cold dinners and stuff so that we don't have to heat up the apartment at all and essentially I just hope our AC can keep up because when it gets super hot it has difficulties and obviously I'm afraid of it overheating or something happening with the electric or whatever so I'll definitely be monitoring like the chinchillas a lot with this weather and just making sure they are comfortable and safe because once it hits 80 degrees, that's the mark where it's like, you have to have an AC for them. So like today, 
Luckily, it's cool enough in the apartment where we probably won't need the AC today, but tomorrow for sure. But that's pretty much the plan. What sucks is like tomorrow evening, we have an appointment, a vet appointment for Torti, and it's just like, that. that's gonna suck. And then Thursday, we have to go to our friend's house because they're gonna be out of town for that day to walk their dog. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, everything keeps interrupting the plans to stay home. But hopefully after that, we'll just be able to stay home during the hottest days. And the weather's supposed to break on Sunday with rain. So I'm gonna be looking forward to that happening. So that's the plan at the moment. He sleeps so soundly. I'm so jealous of this animal. This takes over the bed and sleeps. He sleep. Oh, oh my goodness, stretch. Look at you, baby boy. My God. Hey, so I'm in my kitchen again. Pretty much I am prepping food for tonight and tomorrow and something in the sink is making a weird echo right now because it is now the middle of the heat wave. We have the AC going on. It's 82 right now. High is 87. Each day is just going to get worse. So this morning, before it got super hot and we had to turn on the AC and everything, I cooked rice. I cooked potatoes. I hard boiled eggs. Like I have the eggs here. I'm about to uh, start getting the shells off. I have potatoes that are already cooked and have the skins off. I need to chop up. We we'll make potato salad for that which is for tomorrow. And then I have rice that I just need to put in the fridge, basically. I'm just waiting for it to not be super hot anymore so I can do that. And that's for poke bowls tonight. So everything I'm planning is just cold dinners where I can get the cooking out of the way when it's not super hot. So then I don't make it be an oven in the apartment later. So yeah, I realized um, that yesterday, yeah, I forgot to say how the movie went that we went to and so last week on Wednesday I went to see Men which I've already briefly talked about on here and that is easily the worst movie I've ever seen and so if that's the worst movie I've ever seen then the newest Jurassic World movie is the second worst movie I've ever seen I 100% don't recommend going to see it it is just a huge disappointment the plot line is just like what the fuck like, it's not what you expect from a Jurassic Park movie. And it's it's just depressing. It's just depressing seeing how the franchise has gone. Like, the acting was very mediocre. The dialogue was cringe. It was the cringiest movie I've ever seen. Oh my god. By far the cringiest movie I have ever freaking seen. The ending is not feasible, by the way. Like, I mean, if we're already running low on resources now, like, that ending just is not possible and just so many cliches and everything was a reference. Everything was a reference to the original Jurassic Park, which some of them, yeah, that's cool, but others it's just like, this is getting too excessive. So I rated that movie one star, so don't go see it. But anyway, I read the uh, last chapter in this book in Les Miserables today, and hmm, where should I put that? Okay, I'm just gonna put it there. And so now I will be on book five, which is called The Virtues of Misfortune, I think. And that book's gonna be funny, I think, because all of the chapters are titled like Marius Poor, Marius Penniless, Marius Growing Up. And it's just kind of like, what? <laughs> so it seems like we're gonna be going through like the trials and tribulations of Marius, which was pretty much what this chapter was the start of, because this chapter was mainly Marius being like, Oh yeah, I still need money to live in the world. And he was staying at a hotel, and I guess, um, crap, what are the names? What are the C names? Not Comfer, the other one. It's like CH and has a Y in it. I cannot think of what it is. I guess he vouched for him, so that's why like the hotel guy was letting him stay there. Then the guy's like, hey, even though this guy vouched for you, I still need money, I still need to get paid. And so Marius ends up selling like this gold watch he has and his clothes and stuff. And so he has like 80 francs and his bill ends up being 70. And so this guy is like, hey, if you're looking for work, I know someone who's like translating an encyclopedia. Do you know English? No. Do you know German? No. Okay, well you can't do that. But now Marius decides he's basically gonna learn both of these languages in a month to try to learn like an earn an honest living. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. 
And I really hope that's not the route that this goes because I feel like it's a little bit insulting to be like, yeah, he's just gonna casually learn English and German in a month to have a job. Like, that just feels really a bit bizarre. It's kind of where it's at right now where he pretty much just has like 10 francs. He doesn't have a place to stay because um, I guess the hotel would be too expensive. So I assume he's gonna try to find another job, but I guess I'll find out in these next chapters considering their titles and everything. So that's where I'm at in Les Miserables and ooh, pretty much the plan since it's hot out is to stay inside until 6 p.m. tonight when we have to take Torty to the vet, which she is not gonna like that. And it is going to be really hot out then. So not looking forward to that. Besides that, the plan is just to stay as cool as possible. Keith. Look at them little teeth. Hey, so it is actually pretty late in the day here. It is 9 p.m. We are in the middle of our heat wave, which I kind of want to explain a little bit because like the high here today was only 87, but here in Paris, that is super hot. The pollution of the city actually um, helps to hold all the heat in. So for example, a few years back, we went to Toulouse, which is in the south of France, and when we were there, it was in the 90s, but I felt completely fine, which shocked me, but Toulouse was built to, in a way, to repel the heat, where Paris simply absorbs it. So like 87 degrees might as well be 100 here. The ground is all black, so it just absorbs that heat, the pollution holds it down, and oh, it is just the absolute worst and like most of the transportation you're going to be on obviously isn't going to have air conditioning so like today we had to go take care of our friend's uh dog because they went to disney with some other friends today which i'm glad we didn't go because i would have died just being on that bus to go to their place was brutal like i feel exhausted and the second we got home i immediately rinsed off in the shower because like i seriously my entire body was sweating like i absolutely hate it i feel so disgusting and it is not a good time and so tomorrow is supposed to be 96 and then saturday is supposed to be the hottest at 102 those are the temperatures right now so like if i feel like that at 87 degrees like could you imagine over 100 like fuck that so pretty much the next two days we're literally not going outside at all like not even to go to the grocery store or anything all of that is done not gonna <laughs> not even gonna attempt that so like i mean this ac over here is gonna be putting in work so that's what's going on with that at the moment and i pretty much just finished reading uh two chapters of les miserables actually i read chapters one and two of book five of whatever freaking part we're in and essentially it's pretty much just talking about how poor Marius is at the moment and how that kind of changes a person and the first chapter was pretty much talking about the Ooh, excuse me. The um, more rough parts of it, because apparently from the first chapter to the second chapter, like three years have passed. And so I was talking about how in the beginning he literally had nothing. He had to go days without food. His He only had one outfit, so his clothes were getting threadbare and he didn't have anything to replace them. So people were turning him away, like for work, just based on how he looked and stuff like that. So I was talking about how that's where he really learned about like the value of money and um hard working and perseverance and um qualities like that and so then the second chapter is pretty much after he kind of has a pattern down it says because it's talking about how like when you're poor you pretty much get into like a routine and so he's pretty much living like paycheck to paycheck and i fucking said i fucking said he fucking learned english and german like what so he's working at that um bookshop now like translating stuff and whatever and that's his main job and it's like how the fuck did you learn english and german in less than three years like what who the hell taught you for one like what is going on here so marius now knows three languages just jesus i'm quite jealous but like i feel like that's i feel like that's not really believable to be able to accomplish in that time 
especially since apparently he was still going to school and I think he graduated based on the wording I think he graduated law school so I don't know it said he's an advocate now which the term for lawyer in French French is avocat which is the same fucking word for avocado and so I don't know if that's just like the I don't want to say literal translation but I guess it's kind of what I'm saying I don't know if that's like the literal literal translation for that word or if it actually has something to do with being a lawyer I'm not exactly certain but pretty much Marius has accomplished a lot in these three years and he never took money from anyone he didn't want to have any debtors or anything like that and apparently now he's living in the gorbeau tenement which is where jean valjean had stayed and javert momentarily and stuff so that place definitely sees a lot of the important characters but like the way it ends is a bit ridiculous because now he's obsessed with finding Thenardier, and he has this image in his head of how like Thenardier, like pulled his uh, father out of the rubble while there's like bullets flying by and stuff and carried him on his back to safety and that's not what happened at all obviously so I'm assuming that's what the next part of this book might be is him trying to find him and I guess pay him back but I mean I would assume he learns pretty quickly his true colors but I guess we'll have to see and find out with that because he's been searching for him for the entire three years as well and there's been no sign of him there's rumors he's like not in the country anymore and stuff but i know that they're supposed to be in paris or at least they are in like the musical and the movie i'm curious to kind of see if maybe they had changed like his name or something and he was kind of keeping his identity secret or whatever so i'm assuming we'll find out more of that next but besides that my plan is just to kind of try to read more the next few days since we're not going out at all but i have this book here that i'm currently reading for book club it is called Troy by Stephen Fry and this is not I don't think this is a good book club pick like it's pretty much all of the Greek mythology leading up to and having to deal with Troy and I was interested in reading this at first but then I got like 120 pages in and it's just been a slog to read since because I mean I I'm into Greek myths and I've read several retellings including Son of Achilles and stuff so like I've heard all this stuff before and it's not retelling them in an interesting way at all so I'm just kind of like what's the point and I would really like to finish this what page am I on oh I'm further than I thought I'm on page 239 and I think there's pretty much exactly 100 pages left because the rest is like all appendixes and extra information and stuff but I started this book like 10 days ago and it usually takes me like three to four days to get through a book so this has definitely been a slog and I would really like to finally be done with that during this freaking heat wave. If you think I look a mess, it is because I am. I probably haven't even brushed my hair in a few days, but I don't care. I'm not going outside and it is too hot to do so. According to my computer right now, it is 98 degrees and our high is 101. So we're supposed to hit that in like two hours. So yeah. You can definitely tell the difference between the temperatures from even just yesterday to today. Like, it is uncomfortably warm in here. However, the chinchillas are fine. I've been keeping an eye on them. Our AC is literally pointed, like, directly at them kind of thing. And for chinchillas, like, touching their ears, you can tell kind of uh, what their temperature is. Because, like, if they get too hot, their ears will get red, their ears will be warm. And both of their ears are nice and cool, so they're doing fine. They are completely oblivious to the fact that we are in a heat wave, which, to be honest, is how it should be. Cats are pretty sleepy. They're a little warm. Ori is right here on my desk sleeping right now. Porti's a little more active, but she's over there sleeping on the bed. Um, but yeah, pretty much the heat is kind of affecting us all, because the air in the apartment it just feels oppressive like it feels like it's pressing on you and it feels dense and it's just not a good time but i have read two chapters of the is rob one yesterday one today and i'm kind of gonna have to refresh myself on the one from yesterday because i literally like don't remember at all i don't know why and i guess it's a good thing i'm doing this um vlog and stuff so that i can actually remember some of the things i read but the chapter today was pretty much just about the guy that told Marius about his dad, the one that he had met in the church, 
It's a really, really old guy. His name is Monsieur Mabuff, which is a really funny name. And pretty much he's just this old guy that never married. He has a female housekeeper who also never married or anything. And pretty much he's obsessed with books and plants. That's his thing and that's all he cares about. He wrote a book on plants and that's how he makes his living kind of thing. And he prints the book himself. So he has like the plates for the book to print them. I guess when things were going well, there'd be like three people coming to the house a day to come buy this book. And it says he would make like 2000 francs a year. So he was still poor, but he was doing okay. But then things kind of changed, the economy got bad, and pretty much everyone stopped buying books, especially plant books, and he had to move to like a cheaper place and stuff. And so kind of at the end here, it's saying how the only people that would come to his door was this um, bookstore owner and Marius. And him and Marius are kind of like BFFs, even with the age gap because um, Marius kind of like makes him feel more alive and stuff but the book says this guy basically looks like an old sheep and he doesn't really care about like politics or anything it's just these plants and books like he's trying to like crossbreed things like make plants better than they currently are uh, get plants that can't currently grow in Paris grow there things like that so he seems just kind of like a cute little old man character so the chapter before that is called Marius Grown Up and Marius is now 20, because uh, those three years have passed. He left when he was 17, which I didn't realize he was that young. I was thinking he was like 20 then, but no, he is only 20. Oh yeah, and it talks about in the beginning of this chapter here, how even though his grandfather was fucking horrible at showing it, he did love him. Like there's actually a sentence here that I thought was kind of interesting. It says, oh, this is on page 588. It says, there are fathers who do not love their sons, but there has never been a grandfather who did not adore his grandson. And so it goes on to say that the grandpa actually idolized Marius and stuff and pretty much regrets kicking him out. Like it says that if he had to do everything over again, uh, his immediate answer would be like, yes, he would do the same thing, but that in his heart, he knows the answer would be no. He wouldn't be able to do that kind of thing. And he really, misses Marius and regrets having him not around and like before this guy was in his early 90s so like how old is he at this point if three years have passed and there's another sentence here where it's kind of talking about his grief and stuff and it says old people need love as they need sunshine it is warm and I'm just like oh my god that is like one of the saddest sentences I've ever read in my life but it's also true like I feel like uh if you're in a situation where you have no one like you don't have your family left and you kind of like wither away a lot quicker and then it just kind of goes on talking about how like Marius is a man now and that poverty has done him well and that he is kind of not exactly making a name for himself but fending for himself making his own money and he turned down a job where he would be making I think it was like 3,000 francs a year it would be like a more comfortable job because right now I guess his work isn't consistent and basically he's like i don't want to be a wage slave and so he turns down like this really good deal where it would have given him like room and board and everything because he's like he doesn't want to lose his free time apparently he will like just stare off in the distance for like a whole day just thinking and he doesn't want to lose that oh yeah also we've come back to the fact that he's in advocates even though he went to school and fucking graduated to do all this he doesn't give a shit about being a lawyer or anything and he refuses to go to courts and deal with legal transactions and stuff so he pretty much just completely abandons his education and it's just kind of like well okay that was worthless yeah it says the thought of consorting with attorneys hating about the courts chasing after briefs was odious to him and at this point it does seem like he's not really involved in the abc society much uh, it talks about how he's very lonely, like he only has two friends, one of them being that really old guy, the other one being uh, Korferak, which I'm, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name correctly, which is the guy that basically, when they first met, he gave him kind of a room and introduced him to the ABC Society, but he's essentially the only one that Marius is communicating with at the moment. So yeah, pretty much Marius is just kind of doing his own thing at this at the moment. I'm kind of wondering if there's some event or something that happens that kind of pushes him back into the ABC society. Because like I said, right now he just kind of seems to be doing whatever the fuck he wants. So 
I'm also interested to see when the Thenardiers actually come back into the picture. Like, when does he meet Eponine? Like, we know that Eponine falls in love with him, and I thought that they would know each other a lot longer than what it seems like it's going to be. I really thought that Marius knew Eponine from like when they were children, but obviously in the book that's not the case at all. So I'm kind of interested to see how it all ends up tying together and where exactly we're going to go from here next now. So that's all in Les Mis for today. Uh, yesterday I think it was I actually finally finished that book Troy, like oh my god, finally. I feel like it's definitely like an entry-level book into myths and, it, and not something you need to read if you already know them. So that definitely wasn't as good as it could have been. But yeah, besides that, we're still not moving around much. We had the light off for a good chunk of the day, but then it was just way too dark in here. And just trying to stay hydrated and feel comfortable. And like tonight, we're actually eating on a giri that we prepared this morning. Literally the first thing I did when I woke up was make rice so that way it wouldn't be excruciatingly hot in the kitchen. And unfortunately it looks like it's not going to rain tomorrow anymore so it's not going to exactly break the heat as much as we want it to, but we'll see. So I forgot to close out this vlog last night. I, for some reason most of the day yesterday I was thinking it was Friday, but it was indeed Saturday and so today is now Sunday. and. You literally cannot tell that yesterday was 100 degrees. As you can see, I'm out on the terrace and it literally, in the span of like eight hours, went from 100 degrees to 60 degrees. And the high today was only like just over 80, but it feels fantastic outside right now. Like there's a really nice cool breeze and the air doesn't feel oppressive at all. So like, this is insanity. So heat wave officially done, but we're supposed to get rain for pretty much the whole entire week including this evening so i'm just trying to enjoy out here while i can but thank you for hanging out with me it is always appreciated and until next time bonjour and au revoir